Hey guys, this is Chris at Highline Guitars, and you're watching episode 55 of From the Luthiers Workbench. In this episode, I'm going to answer a couple of questions which uh, have come up, and I'm going to give you a guitar building tip that I just came up with recently. First of all, I've had a couple of questions about one of the guitars that I've been working on that has appeared in a couple of my videos, as well as in photos on my Facebook page. and the guitar I'm talking about is this one here, and the question people have been asking is, when is it going to be done? Uh, when I started working on this, I didn't really think it would get that much uh, response, but I think maybe the color is such that uh, people are kind of intrigued by it and want to know when it's going to be available. Well, when I started working on this guitar, I was using it in a number of my videos showing how I spray uh, paint and clear coat finishes on my guitars and after I was done filming and editing and shooting and reshooting uh, I ended up with probably about like an eighth of an inch thick of finish on this guitar which is way too thick uh, I just kept spraying it clear coating it and filming all that so I decided what I need to do is go back, strip this all off, back down to the bare wood, and then just put down uh, a, a coat of paint and then uh, the clear coats. And at some point I'll do that, but uh, right now I'm so busy I just don't, haven't had a chance to do it. And I really didn't want to go back and go through the hassle of, of stripping off all that finish and then repainting it and doing all that. So um, this one's going to go on the shelf and probably sit there for a while. This may end up being kind of a winter project, who knows? It just depends on how my schedule goes. But uh, I've got a neck for it. The body is, you know, all it needs to be is stripped and, and then refinished and it'll be ready to go. So uh, I guess stay tuned on that one. Okay, so another question that I've gotten recently uh, has to do with the video I shot a while back. It was episode 37 where I talked about filling grain in wood. It seems that a, a, a number of people don't really understand the whole purpose of filling grain. And I've had a couple of questions asking, why do we do this? And what are the pros and cons? And is it necessary? And it makes sense to me, but that's because I've been doing woodworking for so long that I understand the value of doing it. For somebody who's never actually done any woodworking before, it might seem like an odd thing to do. After all, why can't you just sand the wood smooth and put the finish down? Well, let me try and explain it and hopefully it'll make sense. When we fill grain, what we're trying to do is create a surface that is level and smooth so that when we put a clear coat over the top of it, we don't have to keep applying coat after coat after coat because they soak into the pores of the wood. Wood, uh, it's almost like your skin, it has pores. And those pores um, can follow along grain lines and then you've got uh, grain that can be really deep and pronounced. And so what happens is, is the wood sort of acts like a sponge and it can suck up the finish. All woods will absorb finish to a certain point. Some woods, however, are much more absorbent because the pore structure is so open that it, you can literally pour a clear coat finish onto the surface and watch it just suck in and it just disappears into the wood. And it takes a lot of coats before you can start to build up the clear coats to where you'll eventually be able to buff them to a high gloss shine. So we, we need to fill that grain. We need to put something in those pores that will block them up so that they won't keep absorbing uh, finish. And um, another thing that we need to, to try to do is, um, and we don't actually have to do this, but one of the, the nice things about some of the woods we use is they have really attractive wood grain, but it's not always clear and easy to see. And one way to help bring that out is to, uh, to use a color tinted wood grain filler that will make the grain and the pores really stand out. You, you'll see them. Uh, but you won't feel that. The, the surface of the wood will feel really smooth. So let me uh, bring you in for a closer look at the before and after so that you can kind of get an idea of uh, what's going to happen when you fill the grain. 
So what I have here is a, this is a body blank, and this is made out of mahogany. And if you zoom in really close, what you can see is all these tiny little black dots and dashes and such, and they're organized um, to sort of follow a pattern of grain. And those are pores, and if, you know, I can drag my fingernail across the surface and I can feel those pores. And in order to get a super smooth finish, whether it's gonna be a matte, satin, high gloss, whatever, I need to fill the grain in. Um, now when I say I need to fill it, it isn't you know, an absolute requirement that the grain be filled. Some people actually like to feel the grain as well as see it. And, and sometimes uh, that's the case for me. But if I want a super smooth finish, I'm gonna have to fill the grain. And so as I mentioned in episode 37, I use the uh, drywall joint compound and then I mix with it uh, some craft paint. It's a water-based acrylic craft paint that you can get at any of your big box um, craft stores like Hobby Lobby or Michaels or uh, any place like that. And you just mix it in and stir it all up, add a little bit of water, try to get it to uh, the better consistency of pancake batter, and then you apply it and you cover the entire surface, let it dry, and then sand off the excess. So you're sanding back to the wood, but that filler is going to remain down inside those pores. So. The other advantage uh, of using a grain filler, um, what I want you to do is, is look at that surface closely and remember what that looks like. And I'm going to show you, it's a, it's a guitar body that was made from the same mahogany that these uh, boards were cut from, and you'll see the difference. Okay, so this guitar has had grain filler applied. It was black. It was applied fairly heavy and then sanded off. And afterwards, I put a thinned polyurethane sealer over the surface. But as you can see, um, that grain is now very dark. It, it, there's a, a big contrast between the pores and the surrounding wood. And that's what kind of gives the guitar a more appealing look to it. Um, now let me show you another example on the same guitar. Now what I have here, this is a piece of book match ash that I used to make the top. And as you can see where I cut out the shape of the top. And you can see the grain. And the grain, it may not be as obvious in this video, it's not always easy to see, but um, it, it can be pretty difficult to fill this stuff. It's very deep and it's very coarse. So what I did was I used the same joint compound filler, but then to color it, I used, um, it's just a brown uh, water-based acrylic, and I did that applied it heavily, sanded it off, and then applied the sealer to it. And so let me grab that and I'll show you the difference. This is what that ash looks like after using the brown uh, pore filler, grain filler, sanding it off, and then putting a thin polyurethane sealer over the top of it. And as you can see, the grain really pops out when you compare this to this. It really stands out. And it creates a really nice look. So those are the two reasons why you need to use a grain and pour filler on a guitar, or at least the two reasons why you should. One is to create a surface that's going to be flat and smooth, that won't have any of the grain and pour texture in it. And the other is to accentuate the grain and the pores to enhance the appearance of the guitar. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, here's a quick tip for you. 
A lot of times the wood that I use for uh, control cavity covers, tremolo covers and things like that, has been plain so thin that it's kind of flexy and it's not always as strong as I'd like it to be. So what I do is I reinforce it and I do that by um, mixing up some, this is a slow set epoxy. Well, it's actually, this is a mid cure. It takes about 15 minutes to cure. And I'll mix that up. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece, uh, this is called uh, spun bonded polyester uh, or reme. It's also exactly the same thing as uh, a dryer sheet. Uh, the difference is, is you just wanna rinse out the dryer sheet to get rid of all the, uh, the scent and any of the chemicals that are in it. But what I'll do is I'll mix this stuff together and then I'll lay the uh, spun bonded material onto it, make sure it soaks up really well, and then I'll let it, it the epoxy cure. And it acts kind of like fiberglass. And I'm only going to be applying this um, just over the area that I'm going to need for this. And what that'll do is it'll drive really thin and clear. And of course, this is going to be the back side of a cover, so you wouldn't see it anyways. But then once it's dry, it's like having a thin layer of fiberglass on the wood. Great way to strengthen it. So, you know, all you need is the uh, a dryer sheet and some fairly slow setting epoxy, you know, something that will take... Uh, a little longer than a five minute cure. You want it to, to take a little bit longer so that you can have time to, to work the stuff in. So I'll just let that cure and then uh, I'll come back to it and it should be hard enough to, to keep this wood from flexing and cracking. So after the epoxy has cured, this is kind of what it looks like. And as you can see, the, um, that dryer sheet, spun bonded polyester sheet, it disappears into the epoxy. I mean, you can kind of see the texture of it, but this side is not going to be visible. Uh, what this is going to be is a Floyd Rose Tremolo cavity cover, and this is the side that will be on facing out. So uh, I applied the epoxy and uh, dryer sheet to this side to reinforce it. So as you can see the side without it bends pretty readily. It's not hard to bend but this side it's much stiffer. It just isn't going to want to bend. So that'll keep this piece once I've cut it out from uh, you know cracking in the middle or It'll be much stronger and will hold up much better. And like I said, this side you won't see, so it doesn't really matter how it looks. But that's just uh, kind of a cool way to reinforce thin wood. So give it a try. Okay, well that's about all I've got for this episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. And uh, in episode 56, who knows what I'll talk about. I've got a few ideas. So until then, take care and uh, we'll see you soon.